So this should give you an idea of the kind. So this is the mic again, six inches in front of the mouth. Welcome back to the channel. If you like this type of video, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the link in the bottom right hand corner. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. If you want to skip the different parts of this video, timestamps are in the video description. Just click on the time and that'll take you to the relevant part of the video. A quick disclaimer before I start this video. First of all, I'm not saying that you should upgrade your microphone. There is a lot of hassle involved. If you don't have the parts already, you need to order the foam. You need to order sound deadening. So I'm not saying just because you can, you should. You've got to weigh up the hassle and the cost if it's worth it for you. And second of all, these mics have issues from the factory, from what I can see. Some of them are okay. Some of them, the mics are loose in them. So depending on where the position of the mic that you have, maybe the, the fix, the upgrade is going to be slightly different from what you see in this video. So you have to use your common sense to see, you know, how you can adapt what I do in this video to the specific microphone that you've got. And also another disclaimer, maybe the mic that you get is not exactly the same as the mic I get. With all those disclaimers, I'll put a link to the mic that looks exactly the same as the mic that I used in this test in the video description. I'll put a link to the foams also in the video description if you want to get them. And I'll also put a link to this company that's selling the samples of the sound ending in the video description. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey guys, so this video, how to fix or upgrade the world's cheapest vlogging microphone and in parenthesis, the world's cheapest usable. I'll put a link to the mic in the video description so you know which mic we're talking about. If you want a more specific detail so you order the correct mic because there's two main plastic mics on eBay, I'll put a label on the uh, video and plastic mic one is the good one and metal mic is a good one but we're going to do plastic mic one in this video how to upgrade this specific microphone so to upgrade the microphone we're going to need these things uh, scissors sound deadening about the sound deadening this is tar based or bootle based sound deadening it is not closed foam sound deadening i don't believe that will do anything. You need this sound then, and basically something similar to Dynamat or Dynamat or uh, Boomat from DEI. So this is the product on eBay. Basically, it's a company that sells samples, and because we're only doing a very small thing, you just need a sample, I imagine. So this is the stuff that you need. Again, not a foam sound insulation. I don't believe that will work and it will be a, a nightmare because the mic will be so big after. Anyway, so that's the sound deadening. Also, we're going to need to change the foam on the microphone. So this is the foam that comes with the mic. And this is the foam we're going to change to. So you have to work out if this is an issue for you. There is a big difference in the size of the mic after the modification. Electrical tape, pair of scissors to cut the uh, sound ending. And this we're going to try uh, and change the, the cover of the microphone to a mouse to see what, how, if this is, what the sound quality is like with using this. Is this better than the foam or not? So those are the parts that we're going to be using. Uh, this is the, um, these are the foams that you can get on eBay. They cost $1.28 and you can get eight pieces. Um, this big size is basically what you're going to be need to be on the safe side. It's 30 millimeters high by 20 millimeters wide. The eight, I don't know what that is. And that is what you need. Basically, I had these things around anyway. So this upgrade cost me, this fix upgrade cost me nothing. But if you want to get it, if you need this foam cover or if you need the sound mat, again, links in the video description for that. Hey guys, so this is the mic in its original form. It is, I just want to do a sound check. This is uh, directly in front of my mouth, about six inches away. So this should give you an idea of the kind of sound that it gives outside the box. So this is the, the mic in its stock form. So first of all, the first process is going to be to assess the mic to see if it's got any issues. Uh, from the factory so the first issue that comes to mind is that there is some vibration inside the uh, mic which is obviously not good if you're going to be moving around at all so we're just going to peel this off the cap comes off easily it's not glued on or anything and we can see that the uh, mic is actually loose inside the casing so we're going to need to fix that and that is what we're going to do as a first step. So to do this, we're going to cut a very fine line from this sound deadening. And we're going to root it inside the end of the casing. And try not to pierce the mic with the end of the scissors. And that is stop the mic from moving inside. I'm just going to peel this off very quickly. Just to see 
if it's encroaching on the mic. It is a little bit. So we'll just go around here. That maybe this bit is a bit in the way. So literally, the only thing I'm doing here is just pushing it away from the mic itself. So it's not encroaching on it. And we'll just push the cap back on. So that has stopped the mic from moving. I don't feel any vibration. So that's the first step. And the next step is we're going to wrap the entire mic in the sound deadening around the outside. And what we'll also do is we will... We'll get some of the cable into it as well, uh, just to give the cable a bit of support. Because like I said, it's only glue holding it in at the moment. So I'll just make a mark in the sound end in there for the scissors. And we'll just cut across this segment here. Like I said, better to cut it too big than too small. We'll just peel the back off it. Back off it. And we will mount it up so it overlaps the top a little slightly. And then we'll just roll this up in the um, sound editing. We'll just cut it at an angle, like so. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get the full mic back on it, but we will see now. And I just want to make sure, really, that it's got the cable. What's not also not helping is that it is sticking to the sound editing. The great thing about eBay is that they have many spare foam mics you can buy these separately and it just so happens I've got a, a bigger one so we'll pull this off here and we'll try with the uh, bigger one okay so that's the mic with the uh, jacket back on so we'll just see what difference this uh, sound editing has made to the uh, mic so this is the mic again uh, six, inches, six inches in front of my mouth. This is the mic again, six inches in front of my mouth. This is with a sound deadening on, as we showed in the video. So it's got a sound deadening inside the mic to hold the, the mic steady. And it's also got sound deadening around the outside, like we just showed when we applied it. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of sound quality this mic now has. That's the uh, sound test with the foam. And then we'll see if we can pull the foam off and uh, test out this uh, mouse so i think what i'm going to do guys just to make this process a little bit easier i'm going to wrap it in um, electrical tape and so we're just doing this obviously just to make it easier to get this on okay guys so we've got the mouse on finally took a bit of work so this is testing the mouse uh, six inches six inches in front of the mouth this is testing the mouse six inches in front of the mouth so we're not really that concerned about the volume but we just want to see if the frequency range is here and what the difference is between having the mouse on the mic and having the uh, foam on the mic what difference does that make to the sound so hopefully i've talked long enough for us to get a good comparison of that now so now we've done the sound tests we've done the modifications let's go and do the analysis of the sounds this is uh, directly in front of my mouth about six inches away so this should give you an idea of the kind so this is the mic again uh, six inches six inches in front of my mouth so this is testing the mouse uh, six inches six inches in front of the mouth the mic in its stock form and then we'll be using this recording this is the mic again six inches in front of my mouth this is where the sound deadening not really that concerned about the volume Volume, but we just want to see if the frequency range is here to compare it against the uh, modifications that we're going to do to this mic on as we showed in the video so it's got a sound deadening inside the mic to hold them and what the difference is between having the mouse on. so in conclusion guys I'd say that the upgrade is well worth it there's at least from my perception it's a night and day difference between uh, the stock mic and insulating the mic with the sound deadening like we showed in this video with regards to if you need to put a mouse on it or the foam on it, I would say you only need the mouse for extremely windy conditions. Uh, I'd say 99 times out of 100, the foam is going to be, is going to do the job. And I'd say the frequency range is bigger on the foam. It's less insulated, which is what you would expect considering how much uh, hair is on the mouse. As always, thank you for watching the video, guys. If you are not a subscriber already, please subscribe to the channel. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. Look after yourself and I'll see you again next time.